Hello and welcome to Math 200 Online Statistics at Kenyatta College. My name is Ray Lapus. In this video we will do a homework problem from section 9.3. It says that listed in a data table are IQ scores for a random sample of subjects with medium lead levels in their blood. Also listed are statistics from a study done of IQ scores from a random sample of subjects with high lead levels. Assume the two samples are independent, simple and random, and selected from a normally distributed population. Don't assume that the standard deviations are equal and they want us to complete parts A through A and B. Uh, they want us to use significance level. Now before we look at the data we can just assign our null and alternative hypotheses based on what's described. Uh, we're going to assume that population 1 consists of the subjects with medium levels, medium lead levels, and population 2 are, is a population with high lead levels. Again, we're going to um, test the claim, well, we're going to test the claim that the mean IQ scores for subjects with medium levels are higher. So that's the first population. I think the first population will have a higher um, IQ. So this one has a U1, mu1 bigger than mu2, but the null hypothesis doesn't look like it's correct. Uh, C has another greater than sign and we have the condition of equality so I think our answer is going to be C for this one. Alright, let's move on. Uh, they want us to compute the test statistic. For that we are going to need to take a look at the table. Uh, the table, one part of the table is given in uh, as an original data set whereas the other part is given as uh, as a set of statistics. So let's take our value given in a data set and for this we will need to figure out our our basic statistics here. <coughs> so the X bar is going to be the mean and in these spreadsheets we say average and then the next part is uh, our standard deviation, STDEV. And then N is the sample size. It looks like there's going to be 11 of them. Now let's take a look at our second population. Our second population has uh, 87.843 for the mean. and the standard deviation was 10.417 10.417 and again there's 11 in the in the sample so um, the sample uh, this is going to be a t-test and for us to use a t-test we have to identify degrees of freedom and degrees of freedom um, to for simplicity's sake the degrees of freedom that's calculated in the book is um, n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1 and you take the smaller of the two in this case they're both the same and that's just going to be 10 all right uh, we don't need this information just yet but we can take a look at uh, the significance level and that significance level is 0 0.01. Uh, we decided that this has a greater than sign and so this is going to be a right tail test. Okay, let's start computing our test statistic. For that we need to figure out what uh, the numerator and denominator is for this test statistic formula and um, we're going to assume that the mu1 and mu2 are going to be um, equal because we're saying we're assuming that it's uh, zero uh, so we're going to need to compute x1 minus x2 
uh, x1 bar minus x2 bar. So we'll say equals and we have the x1 bar listed already and then subtract the x2 bar and then we get this number uh, 1.88 and then we need to compute this thing under the square root so let's uh, do that sqrt for the square root and then that's uh, s1 squared so this is just a standard deviation but they actually want the variance so we need to square that uh, divided by n1 and then we'll add uh, s2 squared divided by n2 and then our test statistic is going to be the quotient or the uh, the division of these two things so we'll say equals the numerator divided by oops let's try that again the numerator divided by the denominator and we got a test statistic of point uh, four one so that's fairly close to zero I think we're gonna get a pretty high um, a pretty large p-value out of this but we'll we'll see to make sure uh, again, this is a right tail test, so we're going to take a look at the, find the p-value using the right tail, and that's going to be a t distribution rt, t dist rt. So we'll say t dot dist and right tail, and we need to find our test statistic, which is this, and our degrees of freedom, which is 10. And so we got a pretty large probability value of uh, 3417 or 3418. Okay. So let's uh, fill in some values. I think the first thing they asked for is the, the test statistic. So let's punch that in. They want this rounded off to two decimal places, so we got 419, let's call that 42. And then next is the p-value, the p-value, uh, large p-value is what we got. And so let's put that in and we'll round off to four, or in this case three decimal places they want. Uh, so this is going to be uh, 2 and that's uh, 0.342. So with such a large p-value we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis so that's choice A and D and uh, we have to look back and realize that our claim is the alternative hypothesis so we were trying to support the claim and we are not able to so fail to reject and um, this is the first fail to reject option there's sufficient evidence to support the claim I don't think there was sufficient evidence so uh, because we were not able to reject the null hypothesis so we fail to reject the null hypothesis so there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim which is an alternative hypothesis Okay, so now that we have that, they want us to construct uh, the confidence interval. All right, let's construct the confidence interval. And for this, we have to be really careful because we have a right tail test. And when we transfer that to a confidence level, we would think that our confidence level is 99%, and that's not true. Uh, significance level of 0.01 does not automatically mean. Uh, your confidence level is 99%. Because this is a one-tail test uh, on the right side, we have to assume when we're doing confidence levels, the confidence levels are always two-tail tests, and so we have to assume that we have uh, 0.01 on both tails. So if you have 0.01 on both tails, you're going to end up with a 98% confidence level because that's going to be the area that's left in the middle if you have 1% on the left side and 1% on the right side. So our confidence level is 98. 
Uh, now they want us to find a critical value to construct our confidence interval. We need to find our T critical value. Our T critical value is going to be um, um, 1 minus the confidence level and this is going to be in a two tail so uh, if we we're dealing with a standard normal distribution they didn't seem to have this option and so this one does and allows us to to construct it out of two tails so we'll say a equals t dot inv because now we're looking for a critical value and then we're looking for a critical value out of the two tails so we'll say 2t and then uh, so the tails are basically this one percent uh, but if we take a look at the 98 percent confidence level in the middle it'll be one minus that our degrees of freedom remember was 10 so let's click on that 10 and then uh, our critical value should be 2.763, etc. Now uh, we uh, we need to figure out this square root business, but if you notice, that's the same square root business that happened up here. So let's just say equals, and then I'm just going to click on this cell exactly as is, and uh, we get that value. So the margin of error is going to be the product of these two things. So we'll say equals the critical value times that stuff under a square root. So we have a margin of error about 12.4. We need to figure out what x bar 1, x1 bar minus x2 bar is uh, to construct our uh, confidence interval. But we have that calculation up here also. So while I'm in the cell, I'll say equals and then I'll just click on that x1 bar minus x2 bar calculation that we did earlier and so now to find the confidence uh, interval we're going to add and subtract these two values so for the lower limit is going to be the x1 bar minus x2 bar minus the margin of error and then the next one is going to be the uh, x1 bar minus x2 bar plus the margin of error and we got from negative 10.5 to 14.2 or 14.29 so let's um, let's give that a shot and that looks like it's a pretty large confidence interval uh, round it off to two decimal places the first one is going to be negative 10.52 and then the second one is going to be 14.29 alright so the confidence interval here goes from a negative number to a positive number so it looks like um, the confidence does the confidence interval support the conclusion of the test? Well, because zero is included here, uh, it looks like um, they're about the same. Uh, there's no significant difference between those two. So I think it does support it. Yes, because it contains uh, zero. All right, I hope that helps.